In our Creating a Character Rig tutorial, we showed you how to create a custom comprehensive character rig ideal for movies or cinematics. However, although the rig itself is finished, the geometry is left in this broken up state known as a proxy. Proxies are used during the animation process to greatly speed up performance, but obviously they aren't appropriate for final rendering. For that, we'll need to skin the model. Start by setting your project to the provided scene folder, then open the file Character Rigging Appendix C Start. This file contains our Emma character rig along with the extra IKFK matching and stretch locking additions from appendices A and B. Now we'd like to replace this geometry with an unbroken mesh. Start by deleting the proxy geometry. You can do this by manually selecting and deleting each piece in the viewport. To speed things up, we've already placed all those geometry pieces in the Geo layer, which you can select by right-clicking it in the Layer Editor and choosing Select Objects. Now import the file Emma Mesh Finished. This contains a more polished version of the same mesh we started with all the way back in Part 2 of this tutorial series. Start by opening the outliner and middle dragging the imported Head Features group to the Head Geo group. These features don't deform, so they don't need to be skinned. As for the rest of the mesh though, we want to smooth skin it to the rig so that each joint will influence the movement of nearby vertices, just like your bones influence the movement of your skin. Before we begin, let's increase the fidelity of the skin mesh. Select the mesh and go to Mesh Smooth to increase the number of faces. You could subdivide it even further if you like, but for now we'll leave it as is. Let's also turn our foot controls so they face slightly outward to fit the model a little better. Now we're ready to skin the mesh to the model. The question is, which joints should we skin them to? Remember that both IK and FK joints are for control only. Think of them as the strings driving a puppet. That puppet is the result joints, which represent the character's actual bones. Therefore, the result joints are the ones we'll use. Like the proxy geometry earlier, you can either shift select all the result joints manually, or use the skin bind joint layer we've pre-populated with the correct joints for you. If you look closely at the viewport and the outliner, you'll see only the result joints are chosen. Except at the arms, where we've opted to choose the segment joints instead. This is because we'd like to maintain that nice even twist over the upper and forearms that our proxy skeleton had. Now shift select the geometry. Switch to the rigging menu set, then go to Skin, Bind Skin. In the Bind Skin options, make sure you're only binding to the selected joints, then click Bind Skin. After a few seconds, Maya binds the skin mesh to your rig. At this point, try moving some of your rig controls. you notice that in some places the skin reacts properly, but in other places it doesn't look right at all. This is because our initial skin weights, the amount of influence each joint has on various parts of the mesh, aren't very good. We'll need to tweak them. Return your rig to the bind position and then go to Skin, Unbind Skin to detach it from your rig. Again, use the Skin Bind Joint display layer to select the correct bind joints and shift select the skin mesh. However, this time go to Skin, Interactive Bind Skin. As before, make sure you are only binding to the selected joints. This performs a similar smooth skin operation to the bind skin option we used before but with the added benefit of being able to control the initial skin weights. Open the Interactive Skin Bind tool by either selecting it in the Skin menu or double-clicking its icon here. In the Tool Settings Editor, you can see the bind joints listed. Selecting them displays their region of influence over the skin. Red indicates regions of the skin that are heavily influenced by the selected joint, while blue indicates areas barely influenced. Gray represents areas not influenced at all. You can use these manipulators to resize or move the regions of influence. 
To demonstrate this, switch to the Rotate tool and try rotating the neck joint. Notice how the rest of the head only sort of follows along, such that it quickly gets out of sync with the eyes, teeth, and hair. The same happens if you try to use the head control. This happens because the neck joints don't have enough influence over the head skin. In the Influences list, compare the mid-2 result joint to the end result joint. Notice there are overlapping red zones. This means they're competing for influence over the same patch of skin. Instead, we'd prefer the neck end result joint to have sole influence over the head, so reduce the size of the mid-2 result joint. This may require you to rotate the region to scale it properly. Then scale up the end result joint region so the entire head is red. You'll want to do the same for the other neck joints, as well as the spine and shoulder joints to remove any unwanted influence. Now try rotating the neck and head controls again. This time the head follows them properly. Continue going down the list and use the manipulators to similarly adjust the influence of other joints. In general, you'll want a red region closest to the joint itself with a nice fall off to the surrounding joints. Note that when working on left side appendages, the corresponding right side manipulators will automatically be adjusted to match and vice versa so long as reflection is enabled. Pay special attention around the fingers, where influence tends to bleed from one finger to another. That said, you don't have to worry about being too precise. The interactive buy and skin tool is only meant to give a good starting point for the weight painting we'll do next. As you can see, the initial weights we got from the interactive skin bind are much more accurate. In fact, it's almost usable if not for a few undesirable deformations mostly around joints like the underarm, elbows, and knees. These are areas where our generalized weighting wasn't quite able to do what we wanted. Luckily, we can tweak the weights using the Paint Skin Weights tool. Use the Select tool to select the skin mesh, then go to Skin, Paint Skin Weights tool. This brings up the same list of influence joints. However, rather than adjusting their area of influence using a manipulator, this tool actually allows you to paint the surface of the skin to get it exactly as you like. By default, the Paint Skin Weights tool displays the weights in black and white, with the opacity of the white representing the amount of influence a selected joint has on the mesh. You can turn on Use Color Ramp in the Gradient section to switch to the more familiar color gradient we saw when doing our interactive bind. Let's use the tool to fix the underarm area. The two closest joints to this area are the shoulder end joint and upper arm segment one joint. If we select them, we can see that the shoulder has a little too much influence on the underarm, while the upper arm segment doesn't have quite enough. With the shoulder end joint selected and paint operation set to replace, let's paint a value of 0.5 on the torso under the arm. This means the shoulder end joint will only have half the influence under the arm as it does on top of it. Next, select the upper arm seg1 joint. Spread a very low value a little further under the arm. Now rotate the arm down. Select the shoulder end joint again and reduce its influence under the arm itself. If you find the viewport too cluttered, temporarily disable the display of joints. Once the general deformation looks right, use the smooth operation to even it out. Once you're satisfied, select the mesh and go to Skin, Mirror Skin Weights. Use the 1 to 1 setting since we know the left and right side joints line up perfectly. 
Sure enough, if you check the corresponding right side joints, you will see the same skin weights. Now you can lock those entries in the influence list to ensure you don't accidentally tamper with them again. From here, you just need to continue testing joints in different positions and painting skin weights until all the deformations are correct. While painting certain areas, you may notice that the mesh doesn't maintain its volume the way it should. This can hold especially true for areas like the elbows and knees, which lose a lot of volume when rotated. Part of the reason this happens is because the classic linear algorithm we used for the skin bind process isn't always the best for areas like this. Thankfully, we can switch to a different algorithm for these specific spots. Select the mesh. In the Attribute Editor, go to the Skin Cluster tab. In the Skinning Method dropdown, you'll see three options, Classic Linear, Dual Quaternion, and Weight Blended. Classic Linear is appropriate for the vast majority of the mesh, but we prefer to use Dual Quaternion for joints that pinch together like the elbow and knee. Choosing Weight Blended will allow us to use both at the same time. Return to the Paint Skin Weights tool. Now in the Weight Type field, you can choose to paint skin weights or Dual Quaternion Algorithm regions. Switch to DQ Blend Weight Mode. Now paint around the left elbow. Immediately you'll notice that it helps the elbow maintain its volume. Use the Smooth tool to gently fade into the surrounding Classic Linear regions. Then switch back to Skin Weight Mode to clean it up a bit more. You can do the same for any other regions that lose too much volume during deformation. At which point, you'll have a character ready to receive animation. For more information on how to transfer animation from the proxy rig to the skinned mesh, see our tutorial on non-destructive animation editing.